Hey guys, what is going on? It's Don here from Novus Bear Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we are going to continue off our Pi Hostess series with updating everything, which is portainer and containers and everything inside. So let's get started. Now, for those of you who are new to this series, I will leave a link on the top right for you guys, which is a playlist to the Pi Hosted series just to get you guys all caught up. Now, following on the tutorial, we are now going to be updating Portainer and all the containers inside. And I'm going to show you a couple of methods on how to do that. Now, if you guys have been following the series from the beginning, you've probably been getting that little message on the bottom left, which is saying, hey, look, there's a new version out 2.9 or something, time to upgrade. But there really is no button or way to automatically update from the container itself. Itself. So to explain this a little bit on how containers update is basically you have to recreate it. So you would take the image, go to Docker, stop the image itself, and then delete it and re-download and install the new image with the same settings as before. So that's basically the process of how to update every container. Like I said, Portainer itself cannot do this to itself because as soon as you stop the container, all scripts would stop running, all commands would stop running, and it can't update itself if you stop the process. So updating Portainer will require you to go into the shell and run the whole entire process manually, or in my case, I actually wrote a script for you guys that will actually do it automatically. Now, the other thing I'm gonna be showing you guys is updating containers inside, like JDownloader or transmission and stuff like that. How will we do that? So now I'm gonna be showing you two ways that we could do this, one which is manually, and the other one which is an automated process. So let's begin. Jumping into the desktop, one of the things I'm gonna be showing you is my Pi hosted um, Git. And I did update this update portainer script. So we're gonna be grabbing that and using it. And to show you what I did is basically in here, I'm gonna grab the PID, which is the process ID from Docker of Portainer CE. And I'm also gonna grab the full name because it's Portainer slash Portainer dash CE, et cetera, et cetera. What this does will actually stop it, remove the Portainer, and then remove the image of that Portainer and then reinstall it with the same exact settings. Now, because you've been following the series, the settings on how you install Portainer would be in here, running the same command again, but only in this script, we're gonna be removing the old one and installing the new one. To get into it, we're gonna go into our little Homer dashboard and we're gonna go shell in a box. Now, log in. It's good practice that since you are here, you should probably run an upgrade. So sudo app update and sudo app upgrade to upgrade the host system. That's just because you're already in here. Might as well do that and up, get everything updated. I'm probably gonna have some, some few packages. Oh, yep, 25 packages. I'm gonna do this a little bit later. So do as I say, not as I do. Yeah. Next, we're gonna jump over to the downloads folder. So if you've been following the series again, uh, we loaded the Pi Hosted into our download folder. So I'm gonna change the directory over to Pi Hosted and list the structure. So right now I only have install Docker, install Portainer, and the Pi Hosted template itself in here. What I'm gonna do is git pull, and that's gonna grab all the latest files from there. And if I do a ls, you're gonna see I have a new program called update Portainer. Oh, you know what? I actually didn't even change a flag for this. So to install this right now, what we're gonna do is sh update Portainer.sh. That's because it's not green. You see how it's not like different color? That means I didn't turn it into executable. So I'm running the sh command or the shell command in front of it to allow it to run as an executable. I'm gonna hit enter. It's probably gonna ask me for my password. Um, no, it didn't because I did an app update. And here we go. We run this entire thing and it's gonna upgrade and download uh, to the latest version. And you're all set. And you're not gonna lose any information. You're not losing any data. You're basically just removing the old one, installing the new one with the same configurations. So now that this is done, I could exit this and close this out. Pop back into Portainer. I'm gonna refresh this and type in my password and everything. And that should be it. It should now be 2.9 on the latest version. And everything should look slightly different because when I updated from what, 2.3, I think it was the previous version to 2.6, it did look different. And that is all the stuff we have. Now, to update the containers, all right, what you need to do is hop over into the containers itself. Let's say I want to update Homer, okay? I'm going to click into Homer, and this is the manual way to update it. You would stop the Homer process, okay? So this way now, if I refresh this, it's like you're offline. It doesn't even work. 
you do a recreate. And when you do a recreate, it's gonna pull the latest image, recreate, and that, that's it. That's updating it manually. It's gonna run this whole code, do everything itself, recreate everything, and it's gonna have the same settings as you previously did. So now I could start it. And what I like to do is just read if there was any issues with um, the logs or anything. And give it a second, it should work. Go back into dashboard and let me go into Homer. And there we have it. This is the latest version of Homer, which I don't think they updated recently, but this is the version, it recreated it and I still have the same data. You're not losing anything from this. So that's one way to manually create it. Now, what's good and bad about manually doing this is that one, you could see if there's any new version that comes out manually. You're, you're gonna have to check through Docker Hub. So say like if I go to Docker Hub and type in Homer, right? That's what we just updated. Homer, and that's the one we updated. Anytime that there's an update, it should probably show, oh, it actually had an update about 11 days ago. So technically, since I installed this, I have not updated it, so I did get the latest version. And this allows you to see if there was any notes or anything that was passed that did the update that might or might not break your system. Doing this manually with only five or six dockers is not a big deal because that's not a lot of work. It is tedious, but it's not a lot of work. Once you start to get to 10, 15 containers, that's where it starts getting massive. It gets very tedious just to go through each one and to update it. So you would want an automated process. Now, there is a software called Watchtower. I already installed it. Um, to go get Watchtower, go into App Templates and search for Watch tower by clicking this you could just create it there's no GUI there's no web interface nothing all you have to do is just hit deploy and it's gonna install a small program and what that little program does is every 24 hours it'll check against docker hub to see if there's an update available for your container and update it if there isn't then it's not gonna update it so basically you could set it uh, every 24 hours I'll leave a link down in the description below to the GitHub of Watchtower, but you can also set it to only run every Sunday or every two days or every five minutes. Like you could, there's options that you could set it. And to set the options, actually I should show you guys. Let me um, go to duplicate and edit. I'm not gonna edit anything, but I'm gonna just show you. In the commands here, uh, you would override, and this is where you would type in your little thing. So they have a command called dash I, which is interval, and I think it goes by minutes. So if I was to do dash I slash 30, dash 30, this will check every 30 minutes. So instead of having it run every 24 hours, it will check every 34 minute, 30 minutes. And that's where you would add the little extra options in the command part. Now, jumping back into the containers itself, if I open the logs, that is it. It just basically says, hey, look, this will perform in 23 hours from now. And once it starts updating and everything, you get more of a log, but it just runs in the background silently and checks all your containers to see if it needs to be updated. Now, I do have my opinions about using Watchtower. One, while it, this automation process is great, it doesn't check for if there's any errors or anything in the latest version of the code. So it might possibly break something that you are currently using. So example, if you're using Guacamole or Guacamole and there was a new version that was updated and Watchtower decides to update it, but that new version breaks something and doesn't allow you to use it anymore. That could happen. And if you're relying on Guacamole to remote desktop into your equipment, you essentially might have broken it. Now, you could always go back into Portainer and restore the previous version, etc., etc. But there is that opportunity and there is that chance that something might break versus if you're going to manually update, check Docker Hub and see if there's anything that could potentially break your system. You could check it before you upgrade and kind of be a little bit safe on that side. But like I was saying, it's very, very tedious. Well, that is it for me, guys. And on my next video, I'm actually going to be doing that monitoring station that we were talking about where we could see all the containers in action, um, RAM usage, everything we talked about earlier. And I am working with somebody on my Discord that has this really cool dashboard. And here's a quick preview of it. And you could basically see all the containers, each container processes, network, everything that you need to maintain and look at what's going on with your Raspberry Pi. So that's coming next. And if you have any questions about this video that we just talked about or know of any application other than Watchtower, 
Let me know down in the comments below because I would love to check it out and add it to our app template. So anyway, if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as the same minority cave, hack till it hurts.